So, students, uh, today uh, we are going to start the, our important uh, lecture from the neural network that is the introduction of neural network and back propagation. So, today we will see what is mean by the neural network in terms of the recap portion because we have already discussed neural network and its application by taking of the neural uh, numerical portion into the, our previous classes under the supervised learning. And uh, let me inform you all once again neural network is an example of the supervised learning so please keep in mind okay so most of the students will get confused by after understanding the machine learning they suggested that neural network is unsupervised learning so that is a not a part so please keep in mind neural network is an example of the supervised learning so from this portion i am going to start just uh, revision part of the important portion so we need to keep so this slide is totally newly designed slide and that is not uh, completely followed by the or we can say it is uh, we have the some advanced uh, content of our previously discussed topic from the neural network. So what is a neural network? So you have probably already been using neural network on a daily basis. That is the point we need to keep in mind. Just like example, you are communicating to your friend. So you are finally communicating again and again. So there will be chain. So there will be chain is making. It means uh, number of the connections we are having the multiple way. So uh, in the real life situation, uh, Google or Siri or the Amazon web, these are the good example or we can use a self-driving car because uh, in our model in our machine uh, each and every instruction each and every communication channel is connected so when the message is passing when the communication is passing from one information to another information so how they are passing and that is to be done by the hard drive same thing if you try to implement into the, our machine and we have discussed this point that is the artificial neural network so these are the real life application where uh, most of the work is going on and most of the work is already completed just like the Siri and Google. So every time so we are following the neural network in our real life as well. So from this portion, we need to understand. I'm remembering the very simple uh, game, then I will not tell the name of the game over here, but we know when trying to play any game and online, of course, we're trying to play online game, then you or your system is connected to the particular server. And same, most of the people, most of the uh, person are connected to that computer. So they are making the chain. So they are making the chain. It means they are connected by a uh, server or by a server or by the different kind of the devices or machine. So they are making network. But how they are taking a decision, how they are taking the information properly, and based on this parameter, if you try to simulate your work, and that we have the neural network. But in mostly neural network, we have to keep in mind this is only totally transformation version of the our our brain into the machine. It is not really happened actually. We always think our totally brain is transformed into the machine, so we have the neural network. No, neural network is saying to us what is the total number of the input you have, then how these total number of the input are manipulated by the various levels of the layers. And that is to be done by the processing part. And what is the outcome you're getting? That is to be done by the, our computing device. So in our normal computing device, what we have? We have the input data. We have the processing data, process data, processing data uh, on which the information to be processed. And then ultimate at the last, we have the our output. So finally, what you are getting? You are getting the output based on the input. But internally, how many uh, processing unit or how many processing steps are going through that portion that is to be done by the our e processing unit. Same thing if you try to implement in the our uh, machine and that we have the neural network. So neural network is just totally inspired by the our brain, but not is a transformation version of the our brain. So that is the portion please keep in mind. So this is not total transformation. This is inspired by the our brain. How? The communication, the how the information can pass from the input to the processing unit and processing to output. And if talking about the neural network, it, in, uh, if you're talking about the neural network, so we have already seen this portion. We have the three important layer: input layer, inner layer, and output layer. So input layer and output layer would be the one, but one case of the inner layer can have the many layers. So at the last point, you can understand over this slide. A neural network is a system or hardware that is designed to operate like a human brain. Okay, so that is designed to operate like a human brain, not a transformation. Process. Please keep in mind. 
because student will always get confused so to avoid the confusion so i am just written the statement for a betterment please keep in mind it is designed to operate like a human brain okay so from this you will understand the neural network carefully now working of the neural network we have already seen through the its various flavor various uh, layers so uh, we have uh, remembered the something then uh, if i'm uh, remembering the my word the first layer definitely would be the input layer okay this is the important point please you keep in mind the first layer would be the input layer okay and uh, it pick the input signal and passes to the next layer and what is next layer next layer basically used for the calculation purpose and uh, if we're talking about the image so from the image we will try to extract some features and this extraction of the features will be done by a layer and that is known as the hidden layer so hidden layer can be many but input layer and output layer would be only the one so this is the point please keep in mind and uh, there will be see it is written over here there will be more than one hidden layer okay and finally there is the output layer there is the output layer and which is deliver the final result so this portion you have seen so many times that would be input layer there would be hidden layer and there would be output layer but the hidden layer okay hidden layer can be many but this time i am just representing the my neural network just only for the by the one input layer one node at the input uh, node one in uh, one uh, hidden node at the hidden layer and one output node at the output layer this is simplest neural network so we are having like the neural network but without the these layers you are not able to make your network proper yes so this is the architecture of the our uh, neural network so i will not go into deeply because we have already discussed so many times so we just for the revision purpose i have just uh, shared in the my screen to all the people so as input layer pick the input signal and pass it down to the next layer so information will pass to the next layer and that is to be done by the hidden layer and hidden layer is pass the information to the output layer and that is to the our final result but calculation will be done at the hidden layer okay so let us understand this concept by an example so uh, theoretically i am skipping right now because i will tell you the my concept over here properly with help of the image so theory i am just giving here only for nose purpose then it will help you suppose uh, this is an image this image is ex this image contain a image so this uh, this image contain only one image not a multiple image so this image will be classified by into the its 20 in 28 into 28 number of the pixels from this 28 into 28 number of the pixels we have will have to access some feature so please read out uh, read out to some point so pixels are formed the array and fit into the input layer if your image is bigger than 28 by 28 then you have to shrink your size because uh, your particular uh, information is not capable to solve the neural network so you have to reduce its size and it is has been so many times when i try to download some image over the internet then you will see the over the internet everything is perfectly visible everything is clearly showing over the image but if you try to download then you will see the size automatically reduce and that is the reason so when you try to solve any problem by this image then this image contains some features and based on the this feature you are picking the some feature three features x1 x2 and x3 and you will observe over here uh, each and every feature we are treated as a over that is to be done by the our input layer okay that is to be done by the our input layer and this input layer will be connected by the out hidden layer if we're talking about the hidden layer so if it is connected by then it is connected by the some weight it is connected by the some weight so here we have the so many weights and each and every weight is determined that this this uh, 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 this node so this weight is what actually weight is determining the some values to carry your information from one layer to another layer so each and every node contain own information but what is the value on which your your information can transform from tra transfer from one place to another place so weights are multiplied by the its total number of input what we have given over here and its wise 
and wise we are going to discuss what is a wise wise is just additional value and that is to provide the efficiency or model and to provide the to uh, minimize the error actually to minimize the error we have to add the wise so wise is optional but if you are trying to add it means you are trying to minimize your error that is reason so the formula we are going to discuss that is the summation of the i equal to 1 to n W i into x i. So x i is what number of the features. W i the with respect to its weight and plus b. So b is y. And so information can be passed like this manner. So in this image we have the three features. Suppose we are selecting only three features: x one, x two, x three. So we have this part. So the weights, some of the input fed us, uh, fed us input to the activation function. So what is activation function? If you remember the my words, what is activation function? So after after uh, transfer the data at the hidden layer, the hidden layer will uh, fire some information to its next layer. But before that, we have to calculate something. So after calculation, this node or the the node at the hidden layer will transfer some information. But how we can do? And there is the activation. So activation function is a function which is active which is used to activate the neuron. So Neuron, we are neuron will be activated at the hidden layer to pass the information to the next layer or to pass the uh, same layer to pass the same layer, but the uh, same layer means uh, same hidden layer. Uh, but hidden layer can be many. At a time, we can say HL one, HL two, and so on. So, so other hidden layer, we can say the other hidden layer, we can pass the information, but with the of the activation function. So activation function is an important point, and if you remember the my example. In our previously discussed, what is the name of the activation function we have discussed? We have discussed the sigmoid activation function. If you remember this word, can you uh, tell me if you you are remembering the sigmoid activation function? Sigmoid activation function. Yes, sir. And what is the formula? Can you tell me? Sir, I don't remember like uh, fully, but it is one upon e raised to something. One upon one, one upon one plus e to the power minus x, and this x is what? This x is the value that is a we are getting over here, and this x is to contain some information, and we have solved this problem. If you remember, okay, this x is basically contain the information that is to be uh, hold by the particular node. Okay, so this x means we are talking about the the value of the node. Okay, so how we are getting the value of the node? It's uh, uh, information we are passing coming through, uh, passing coming through the uh, input. So after input values and its weight multiplication along with addition of the bias, each and every node at the hidden layer will contain some values. Okay, so we can say over here. This actually this x is what this x is hold the. This x is all the value of all the value of node. Okay, we can see the node value. Node value at at hidden layer. Okay. This is a portion you are remembering. I think so. Are you remembering this portion? We have seen the sigma activation function. The formula was the one upon one plus e to the power minus x, and this x is hold the value of the node at the hidden layer. If you remember, so we have to activate the our uh, hidden node. So what is the formula? That is the sigma activation function. And now, are you remembering this portion? Just tell me. Yes, sir. Yes. So, so uh, what I am speaking over here, it is already written over here. So you can see as a signal flow within the hidden layer, the weighted sum of the input is calculated and is fed up, see, and fed up to the activation function in each layer to decide the which node to which nodes to fire. So that is the reason for using the activation function because the activation function is more important portion. But just like the neural network, just like the various kind of the concept in this real world situation, we have the various kind of the activation function in the machine learning. And this portion we have already not discussed so far. So what is the portion I am speaking over here? When discussing anything, when you try to discuss anything in this world, 
is there are so many uh, concept but which concept is better that is uh, our responsibility to know why to know by uh, its uh, uh, understanding approach so attribution functions could be many but uh, i am just suggest to use a sigmoid function and other one but why i am using sigmoid function there should be some reason but there are so other uh, attribution function why i am not picking so that is a point we need to keep in mind so from this perspective we need to understand the what are the other attribution functions okay so before jumping the attribution function so just uh, this summary of the image so here you can observe over here uh, the this is input so input is contained by the this bit so hidden layer so this hidden layer will pass on to the other hidden layer some information so what is the uh, uh, what is the parameter on which we can pass we can activate the such in, uh, hidden node that is only the attribution function so this is the diagram which shows that see this diagram is determined by the attribution function i can write in short way attribution function so that is a necessary if you remember this portion so we have done this activity so here we will take a uh, detour to examine the neural network activation function so here we have the four different kinds the neural network uh, neural networks activation function first one i am going to discuss with the sigmoid function and we have already discussed this one previously so let me explain this concept once again uh, used especially it is used when the modeling is predict the probability so one upon uh, One upon one plus e to the power minus x, as I told you, and that is to be done by the sigma, because it provides the our values between the minus one to one, minus one to one or one to zero, zero to one. Can you tell me what is the what is the its range? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what is the its value? What would be the its range? Input value. No, what would be the its uh, range? Zero to one. So definitely, it is written over here the probability. So we are expecting the probability. So its range would be zero to one only. Okay, so it is written over here. We are talking about the things from the zero to one. And if you remember, its range between zero to one, and we have decided the one threshold value. If you remember, the range between the zero to one and threshold we have decided based on this threshold value. We can decide. The activation function, the particular node will be activated or no, based on its threshold value. Okay, that is the point. Keep in mind. But the formula is one upon one plus e to the power of minus x. Next, uh, we have the activation function that is threshold function. This threshold function uh, basically just look like as a sigma function, but uh, it is used when you don't know want to worry about the uncertainty in the middle. Okay, so at the time you don't know definitely it is practically thing you don't know uh, want to uh, worry about the uncertainty. So you need to define the threshold value. If threshold value is so in the sigma, we are we are not we are not fixing the any kind of certainty could be. We are not deciding the threshold value. But in this case of the threshold function, we are deciding the what is the threshold value that is 0.6, 0.5, and so on so. And it also provides the range between zero and one, but we need to define its threshold value. And this threshold value is clearly determined by the x. So x is basically what? That is the threshold value. There is little bit difference. Please keep in mind threshold. Threshold value. Okay. And if you decided. If threshold value is greater than or equal to zero, so we can say we are having the one. If it is greater than our uh, point, so we can say it is zero. So sometimes most of the people like to use the threshold function, but sometimes most of the people like to the value that is a sigmoid function. So uh, practically, most of the people like to use the sigmoid function because it automatically decides some range. So no issue between that part, but. But uh, we need to define uh, here some threshold value. But you are defining the threshold value manually. Then what is the difference between threshold function and so on? So at the time here we can change the threshold value. That could be that could be 0.7, 0.8. But uh, in the sigmoid function, it automatically decides a sigmoid sigmoid uh, function sigmoid function threshold value automatically decided by the middle value that is 0.5. So it automatically decided because 
the value which is greater than the 0 0.5 so it will be considered uh, considered into the 1 as it will be considered into the 0 but in the case of but in the case of threshold function we can set the threshold value but as an initial level x equal to 0 0.7 it means the value which is lesser than the 0 0.7 will be considered into the 0 or else we can say the value which is upper than or greater than the 0 0.7 or equal to 0 0.7 so we can say it is, it is considered into the 1 so here we can define the any kind of the threshold value without any doubt but in the sigmoid function the it automatically decides the range 0 0.5 so that is the reason why so most of the people just use the sigmoid function due to this reason it automatically decides the threshold value without any doubt but next we have the relu relu is the most applicable usable sigma activation function in a real life situation so there will be competition between the relu and relu and sigma so there, there is a competition again we are i'm saying speaking once again there is a competition between the relu and sigma but i always prefer to use the relu for the practical for the real life situation for understanding race mode is better but for the real life situation we need to deal with the uh, real life situation and use rail why listen uh, the rail that is stand for the rectified linear unit this function just gives the value but says if it is over one then it will just be one and it is less than zero then it will be zero so if you are getting the negative values and if you are getting the power more than one value then it will return the it will return the one or zero. So if you're, what you are what you are getting, it doesn't mean what the value you are getting doesn't mean. But it automatically adjusts the something of uh, adjusted by the something with that whether its function that is max x comma zero. So suppose I am getting the minus two, then the minus two is uh, lesser than the zero, so it will be considered to zero. On and I am getting I am getting suppose uh, I am getting the value uh, five. And I have decided the maximum value should not be exceed than the one. So definitely, but I will I will get the one. The range of this function would be the one and zero. So that is the reason. So that is the reason most of people like to use the ReLU function. So ReLU function is mostly common use nowadays, and I have written over here from the on the slide. Then you can understand. And it gives an output x if x is positive, otherwise zero. So if I'm getting the one then am i getting the one then one i'm getting the two then i'm getting the two and so on so, so positive what i'm getting that should be positive but i'm getting a negative value suppose a minus two minus five so value would be zero so automatically adjusted by this function so max is with the help of the max function relu is mostly usable nowadays and that is the reason most of the people will love to use the relu function for solving the problem while image extraction image processing so when discussing with the CNN, that is a conventional neural network, the kind of the neural network, ReLU activation function will be applicable to activate the nodes or neurons while learning the conventional neural network, and that is CNN. And that is the reason. So ReLU is most applicable there. And uh, ReLU is most applicable in the deep learning as well. So most of the people who are working the deep learning, they can use the ReLU for activate their neurons, that is the reason. And after that, we have the hyperbolic tangent function. By practically speaking, I never like the tangent function. Why? You can see its calculation. Suppose I'm using this calculation to determine the y value, then you can observe over here, one minus e to the power minus two x divided by one plus e to the power minus two x. So it takes much time because everything to be done by the tangent function. So the hyperbolic tangent function is similar to the sigmoid function but has a range of minus one to one so it doesn't mean about the range but the calculation is take, require much time so for activate the neuron if you are if your um, if your neuron is taking much time for its activation then then it slows the process and that is the reason tangent function is not applicable in much uh, much usable we can say much applicable toward the neuron activation but it is also kind of the tangent function so we have to keep in mind and it has a range minus one and one but uh, it is most applicable where uh, whenever neurons will be decided by the some range so we are deciding something the neurons will be activated by the some specific range that is minus one to one so at the time tangent function will be applicable but it's a better idea to use this one relu relu provides a better way because it is not touching the 
it is not touching the negative portion and it is also not using the much comp computation because we are not doing computation over the it is the power x something like this one. so that is reason relu is most applicable because it has own range that is maximum x comma 0 so from the specific range we are getting some value that is okay as we can leave that is reason relu is most applicable so i always recommend you to use the relu and sigma there is only two option and do not try to use any other activation function for simulate your work in the coming days as you are looking for the project that is it so that is a uh, point okay so here we have discussed the four different functions of the our activation function so please keep in mind these are the four activation function and now if you're talking about this uh, our diagram so now let us move to our uh, diagram this one so here we have the summary of the uh, our activation function. So you can note down the, all the summary of this activation function from this slide, and then you can see. So uh, having seen each and every image, you will found that which one is better? Relu is better, or uh, hyperbolic train function is not applicable. Relu function is okay, and uh, uh, threshold function we have to decide. Then uh, threshold function is just some somehow it look like this uh, sigma. So most there will be competition between Sigma and ReLU each and every time. But uh, in the CNN or in deep learning, ReLU is nowadays applicable. So uh, next, uh, when we see the practical session, so I will show the demonstration of each and every activation function with help of the some uh, given input. So I will uh, try to demonstrate uh, uh, into the practical session what is uh, the activation function and I, I will try to implement all these activation functions uh, in the Python program. So don't worry, I will show the demonstration about this one. So this portion is clear to all what is activation function and what are the various activation functions. So we have to keep in mind its simple formula, nothing else. Just tell me, the portion is clear. What is mean by the activation function and what are the activation function? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, for the other student, I'm just going back to the my portion. Just please listen. What we have discussed so far, we are discussing on the neural network and the fundamental part of the neural network we have already discussed. And the working of the neural network will be done by the three important layers. One is the input layer, output layer, hidden layer. Hidden layer could be many, no issue. Okay. So uh, if you're talking about this kind of the example, as you can see over the slide, here from an image, we are picking only three important features and uh, we are associated that we have the three important features. And these three features are connected to the hidden layer of the neural network. And respectively, we have the, some weights plus its bias. And bias is used to uh, reduce the error, but there is no guarantee if you're trying to use a bias, there's no guarantee you will your model or your network will not have any error. It is it is there will be some circumstances can have the error, but at least we can reduce the error. That is reason for using the bias. So after this point, uh, we have already discussed the activation function. And previously in the, our previously class, we have discussed uh, we have studied activation function. Okay, so that is reason and which one sigma. So other than the sigma, what are the other activation function? So we are discussing about the sigma facial function. Relu hyperbolic tangent function, and this is some piece of this discussion. After this point, now we need to discuss the important point that is the back propagation. So, after understanding this concept, the introductory part of the neural network, so error in the output may come. There's no guarantee error will not come. So error may come. So, error in the output is back propagated through the network and weights are adjusted to minimize the error rate. And that is the highlighted point. Please keep in mind why back propagation is saying to us. See, in your uh, 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 system model, you are expecting the output should be the 94%, but uh, you are expecting you should get the 94%, but you are getting the 90%, then it means 4% error we have. And that is to be overcome by the our important approach what we have that propagation so the ultimate we can say and we have already discussed this point i have already discussed this point by the uh, simple example that is back propagation so back propagation is mostly used to uh, used to beat uh, used to minimize the error rate but if you try to minimize the error rate then why and how we can do that is the point you people are required to keep in mind 
so we need to update the weights because previously the based on the previously updated weight the network is not providing new network is not providing the better result so we need to update so that is the reason for using the back propagation and that is to be calculated by the cost function that is to be done by the cost function and you keep adjusting the weight until they fit the different training model and you put it so let us understand from this point right now with this image so you are observing over here from this portion uh this is a car so after observing this car we have found that we are unable to detect the car number over here properly suppose i am tracing trying to uh, trying to um, detect the car number just like x y z 1002 but my model is giving the x y z 1001 suppose that so we are not able to detect the correct number plate of the car from the image and that is the reason because we are getting the error so identify the number on the plate if you trying to find the properly then it's okay from this uh, point i am remembering the story and this is real uh, real life situation uh, which happened by the my friend so i am sharing over here this is and uh, when uh, cct camera are available um, each, uh, at each in a pre pole uh, on the road so when you try to uh, uh, cross the uh, or you just trying to break the signal uh, uh, while uh, we're talking about the traffic signal then you are trying to break the traffic signal then cctv camera will detect which is capture the image of your uh, vehicle number and from that the vehicle number will be traced out but suddenly due to some lack quality of the uh, pixels measurement or lack quality of the uh, 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 image identification approach suppose your number was the xyz1004 and the then 1002 so the my friend told me my vehicle was identified with the help of the number plate that was a number that was x y z 1004 but that was a my number but it was identified by wrongly because of the cctv camera captured the information and just transform image information into the its actual way so object identification is not implemented properly so last digit 4 will be understood by the Two. So I got the chalan, uh, necessary chalan, without any doubt. So I need to pay the fine, but uh, I just rectify this problem to visit the traffic department of the particular city. So that is the reason. So it could be happened. So and why? Because we are getting the error, and to overcome this error, we have to go to the back propagation. So error in the output, error in the output can be rectified by the back propagation. There is no guarantee, but at least we can achieve the good accuracy. that is reason in the neural network we have a drawback and that drawback can be overcome by the back propagation so now let us move to the po point over here you can observe over here the back propagation is showing to over here you are moving back so arrow is showing over here just see see all see this arrow moving back see this arrow moving back so what you are doing you are just moving back from output layer to hidden layer and hidden layers to input layer input layer so at this input layer you will not update the features but you will require to update the weights only because weights are the our uh, values from which you your information will pass on or that is required to carry your signal you can understand just like this one so at the time you are required to update the weights you will not be allowed to change the value of the input layer or, or no um, value of the node at each and every input layer that is point please keep in mind so we will not change the its value we will update the only weights there is only one criteria we are ever allowed to only the update the weights only okay so that is reason so back propagation is required from this portion and that is uh, uh, that is to be done by the our uh, cost function so it is also known as a cost function so if we try to update something so that is to be done by the cost function so what would be the cost function cost function you are remembering the linear regression the cost function that is i can write over here cost function can be cost function can be i can write in simple way cost function can be uh 
एक्चुअल आउटपुट एक्चुअल आउटपुट माइनस प्रोडिक्टेड सॉरी प्रोडिक्टेड आउटपुट and i'm just uh, taking this portion right now error cannot be negative so i'm just making it absolute b write this one and if you want to getting the squaring of this portion so you can make the square of this one so this is known as a squared error and if you remember in this formula and we have already decided or we have already calculated the squared error in the linear regression so that is to be done by the here as well we can From this portion, we need to understand the actual population. So, uh, okay. So the output is then compared to the original result, and the multiple iterations are done for the maximum accuracy. Of course, as I spoke to, you. and with every each and every iteration, the weight at every interconnection are adjusted based on the error. So we need to update the weights towards the error. What is the error we are getting? So that is to be done by the our weight adjusted adjustment. Measurement criteria. So we need we need to update the weight. We need to adjust the weight by the help of the weight adjustment adjustment criteria or weight adjustment algorithm. Okay. So uh, from this point, we need to understand the what is the mean by the our back propagation. So the fundamental part of the back propagation is clear. Why we are understanding? Now tell me, this portion is clear. the fundamental part is clear why we need to understand the back propagation and this is a just revision i am speaking only here right now yes sir okay. yes sir okay so uh, next uh, we have the some idea about the type of the neural network i hope uh, you have studied the various kind of neural network so Can you tell me the various type of the neural network? If you remember the feed-forward neural network, we have already discussed feed-forward neural network. We have already discussed. Yes, sir. Okay, and a convolutional neural network is a kind of the neural network. Please keep in mind. By default, what is the neural network we are using? By default, what is the neural network we are using? That is also known as the artificial neural network. Okay, artificial neural network. But what are the other flavor of the neural network? We have the feed-forward neural network, and it is also known as by default artificial neural network. So if it if anyone is saying to you what is the difference between the artificial neural network and feed-forward neural network, they say there is no difference between the artificial neural network and feed-forward neural network. But in the feed-forward neural network, what we have we have to move from the input to hidden hidden to output. Okay, so that is the reason. And when we have the multiple uh, hidden layer, then we have the multiple feed forward neural network. So there is no difference. Please keep in mind. And this portion we have already discussed. And other networks are we have the modular neural network, radial basis function neural network. In this radial basis function, R V function will be applied to calculate your uh, node. Or uh, that is a portion. So we have the R V F neural network. And Conan self organizing neural network. If you remember the my portion as I told you so. self organizing map if you remember we have discussed this point and this network is also known as the som conen self organizing neural network if you remember the portion and the other one is the recurrent neural network recurrent neural network is also important portion for the text to speech if you need to convert text to speech we need to convert then rnn is applicable and uh, other than these network we have the lots of network but these are the commonly generally mostly use and neural network these are the very specific and please keep in mind there is no difference between the enn and feed forward but representation is required so that is the portion and other than this network we can have the back propagation back propagation multi layer back propagation neural network so what does it mean multi layer means multiple hidden layer we have and back propagation means we are moving from the output layer to the hidden layer to neural there is no difference okay so please keep in mind so uh, summary uh, we have written over here for just notes purpose so this c as i told you the simplest form of the nn is known as the artificial neural network c so what i am speaking it is already written over here now c so so some we have already discussed what is mean by some and uh, we have seen concept is 
approach by the its dimension and plane okay so we will discuss the concept right now so this is summary very friendly speaking this summary we are looking at convolution neural network is mostly used for the image processing and some of the students are working on this topic so i can understand and uh, just like the facial recognition because convolution neural network is basically a part of the deep learning that is the point you can keep in mind this is a part of the deep learning okay so i, I can write here this is the advanced neural network it is a part of the deep learning as well okay a recurrent neural network is also known as the ann but it is applicable when we need to transform our text to a speech conversion so at a time this network is applicable because the steps the fundamental things are it's totally different so rn is also having the lots of the uh, uh, variety in the rn also along with the lstm okay so rn rnn that is a recurrent neural network also work with the uh, uh, um, uh, lstm that is uh, we can say low short term memory so from this approach we can understand the text to speech con con speech conversion and modular neural network basically uh, use uh, to collect the different uh, neural network working together and cutting is nest in the so modular neural network uh, different kind of the neural network will be integrated and they will generate a different solution for in better way so that is the modular neural network will be applicable so but the uh, uh, modular neural network is not much applicable so what are the neural network which are applicable in real life situation rnn convolution neural network and a uh, feed forward neural network and a uh, common swords and uh, rbf one neural network is not really uh, much usable so i never like to use this kind of network but uh, these are the four networks which are most most applicable and rn along with the along with the lstm 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 means low short term memory okay so this is the this is also kind of the flavor of the rn actually lstm okay so this is just idea about the neural network so from this portion i am going to start the little bit idea about the back propagation so now let me explain one uh, once again the back propagation detail manner so back propagation is supervised learning algorithm as i told you way from the very beginning part for uh, for multi training multi layer perceptron is required okay so that is the portion so from this portion you can understand what is this this is the input layer okay and this is the inner layer 1 this is the hidden layer 2 and there is only the one output layer for the layer so in our network if we have the multi layers means what we are talking about the we are talking about the multiple hidden layer here it means we are talking about the multiple hidden layer okay that is a portion multiple so just let me write in correctly neat and clean multiple hidden layers okay hidden layers yes so why we need to do back propagation so while designing the neural network we have already discussed so many times why back propagation is required okay so let us understand this concept with the this point right now so theoretically point you know this point right now but we need to understand how you will reduce the error that is a important point you people are required to keep in mind now you know the portion why back propagation is required but question we should have how you will reduce the error that is a big challenging question so the challenging we need to accept we need to update the weights only so what what is the only the portion by which you can do there is only the one approach that is known to us you are required to change or update the parameter and what are the parameters only the parameter saying to us you just need to update the a weight okay so what is the weight you have used previously you have to update only there is the only 
so such as the error becomes minimum but there is no guarantee at least we can reduce and if you try to do something then we can have the better so from this point you need to calculate the error but how we can calculate the error that is to be done by the actual output minus prediction output and whole square so we are getting the square error okay from this portion you can understand but uh, if the error is minimum then model is ready to make the prediction error is minimum then model is ready to predict the model if error is not minimum then update the parameters so what we are trying to update over here update the parameters means what we are trying to update over here we are trying to here update weight update weight okay so don't worry with the help of the numerical i will show the my proof and i i will given exercise to solve over here don't worry update weights so this approach is known as the back propagation so one we model strain to model that is known as the back propagation so back propagation is mean we are trying to reduce the error by updating the back, updating the weights so that is the reason for using the back propagation so uh, let uh, let me summarize the steps for you first one was the calculate the error so we have already calculated the error minimum the error okay and update the parameters and models is ready so now model is ready to make a decision these are the four steps we have already taken summary saying to us we need to calculate the error minimum the error and update the weights and model is ready to make the prediction so we are doing this activity so what is back propagation so now let us uh, explain more detail about the back propagation with the, some mathematical approach so just let me know the its previous part right now any doubt you are having to understand the what the back propagation how we can reduce the error just tell me any doubt you are having so please you can ask me right from this yes, from this portion uh, type of the neural network to various uh, study about the back propagation so how to reduce the error just update the weights and nothing else especially so now should i explain the what is the back propagation with the help of the some rules so as i told you we are trying to about the basic learning rules so what are the basic learning rules that is we have over here so that is a simple example we are taking over here so back propagation algorithm looks as a minimum value of the error function in the weight space using the technique that is called a delta rule and gradient descent so those students who are studying the uh, machine learning subject and they have studied this term gradient descent so what do you mean by the gradient descent so i have written here summarized way and this is most applicable in the machine learning when you study about the neural network so in the case of the neural network or data rule we are discussing it means we need to try to reduce the error and if you try to reduce the minimum uh, provide the minimum error it means what you are doing you are discussing about the learning problem or learning rate so learning rate what do you mean by the learning rate i will tell you don't worry with the help of the numerical we will learn this concept so weight that the minimize error function is then considered to be solution to the learning problem so for understanding this point what i have i have a simple example okay so the fundamental theoretical part is clear to all that can i explain the fun, this uh, numerical portion just two or three slide we have so by which we will understand just let me know the fundamental part is clear to all what is mean by the neural network and what are the various layers what are the various type of neural network and what is mean by the back propagation this portion is clear to all yes tell me this portion yes, is sir. okay so from this portion we have only two or three step to understand this concept suppose as an input uh, we have the 0 1 2 okay i'm just giving the input and i am just expecting the desired output should be 0 2 and 4 okay so the table is clear the output the input is clear and the output is clear okay so how many input layer you have you have one input layer and how many output layer you have only one output layer but in this case what we have we have the three different node okay that is to be maintained by the 0 1 2 and 0 2 4 Now uh, it is clear to all right now. 
Yes. Yes, sir. So we will discuss the processing part. That is, we need to see if you are using this update of the using this date. So what value you are getting? So now the output of your model went W. W means weight. Value is three. So weight is value is three to each and every each and every node of the input. So keep in mind. So uh, model output will be the zero three six. How you are getting? Because you are putting the weight that is three, so uh, your uh, W equal to three weight. So you are just trying to multiply. Okay, you need to uh, see weight. So this model output would be how we can say that will be identified by the I can write over here three into uh, zero into three. Sorry, and uh, one into three, and uh, two into three. Why? Because if you remember the formula, that is summation of x i into w i. Okay. So here we have uh, we don't have any y's. Okay. So i is equal to one to n or zero to n minus one. What do you want? Okay. So from this perspective, we are getting the model output. Okay. Now, notice that difference between the actual output, difference between the actual output and desired output. See, difference between we are getting the actual output. So, desired output we have seen zero to four should be. If I'm using the model output, so zero three four six. So, absolute error. What we are getting zero minus zero. We have over zero minus zero. Here. Difference we are getting three minus two. Here six minus four. So if I'm squaring all this portion, so you can understand the square error of what I'm getting zero square. See, uh, uh, the purpose of uh, the squaring is saying to us if you are not making the absolute uh, absolute uh, difference, you do you are not getting the absolute difference, then you can use a square error. So the error will not be in case of the negative. A little better idea if you do not want to make the square, so you can make it as a absolute because error cannot be negative. And here one square, and here two square. Okay, so that is it. No issue. This point is clear. This point is clear. What we are getting and how we are getting? Yes. Yes. Sir. And and how we are getting the model output value? So we need to multiply. So this is point is clear because we have desired something, but we are getting the this point right now. Okay. Any doubt? Anything you want to ask right now? Any student who want to ask something? Anything? Any other student who want to ask? No, sir. Okay. So after this point, if I try to uh, update the change some value. Because uh, here I found that I'm getting the uh, much error over here. So I'm just trying to update the weight. Okay, so I'm updating the weight by three to four. Previously I had three. Okay, so now I'm updating the four. If I'm updating the weight equal to four, if I'm multiplying this four zero into one zero to zero, sorry zero to four. And uh, one into four and two into four, so I'm getting the zero four eight. If uh, what is the desired output? So desired difference I need to get, and after getting the difference, I need to get the its scale. So what I'm getting, I'm getting the difference zero four sixty. Okay, so let me explain this portion right now. One second to over here. If I'm just adding one more column over here to know the absolute error. Absolute error. So what is absolute error? I am getting over here zero. So I am getting over here zero. No issue. So zero and uh, this is and this error was the zero over here and uh, four. So two four minus two. What is two? And uh, four eight minus four. So we are getting the four. And I am squaring all these values, so I am getting zero four sixty. 
so again uh, if i am changing the weights there is no guarantee i am increasing the uh, i am increasing already i am just i am reducing the error no but here error is increasing so what i need to do i have used what i have used i have used weight equal to 3 now i am using the weight equal to 4 so what i should do now i must reduce the weight value so next time what i am doing i am just decreasing the value of the weight by decreasing the value of the weight that is i am choosing w equal to 2 if i am choosing w equal to 2 then you can observe over here model output i am expecting 0 3 4 okay in this case in this case you can observe over here if i am multiplying 2 so that should not be 3 this should be 2 actually yeah why because zero uh, multiply by 2 would be zero two multiply by 1 would be two and uh, two multiply by 2 would be four so let me correct this value it should be two so zero two four and this value is same as this value is same as our desired output with respectively we can say square or any kind of error we are not having over here so that is a point you people are required to keep in mind when try to update when try to update your values so from this w equal to 3 you are getting the error when you are getting w equal to 4 you are again getting the error but in the case of the w equal to 2 what you are doing you are not having any kind of error it's showing that it is showing to us when you are decreasing the value of the weight your error is minimizing and that is reason if you want to try to reduce if you want to try to reduce the error then please keep in mind you require to update the weight and please keep in mind the minimum weight so at least your model will contain the minimum error that is reason Is this portion is clear so far this portion is clear tell me right now this portion is clear or anything you want to ask right now please you can ask me the portion is clear yes sir it's clear okay because this is the fundamental step from this fundamental step we will understand the other concept as well so now so what we have done so far ultimately is a summary so far we have discussed and uh, this is the point okay this is critical point so i am not discussing the critical point not so so what you are observing over here this graph is if i am considering this graph then you will found that if i am increasing the weight if i am increasing the weight then my square error is the high dimension i am moving to the i'm moving to the high square error so my square is going my error is going to the high way so if i'm increasing the weight so what is the portion it is better idea to increase i need to decrease my weight and i need to decrease the my weight so there is a point there is some point where this is the point this global loss error is showing to us we are not having we are not having much error it's showing to this this is a point i can write over here the point point which shows it shows no error or minimum error no error or minimum error and when you are getting the minimum error or no error and that point is known as the global loss minimum that point is known as the please keep in mind this is required steps we need to keep in mind this step is known as the global loss minimum okay and this is nothing this is known as the back propagation so back propagation what you are doing back propagation 
you're just trying to update the provocation means this is nothing but it is a provocation what does it mean it means just update the weights update the weights now that is a portion now this this graph is clear if you try to reduce the weight then you are getting the close to the no error option or we are getting the minimum error and that portion is showing to us over here global loss minimum and this is nothing this is the initial step to moving towards the that propagation so we are we need to update the weights and nothing else yes this portion is clear